an ugly pathetic loser is reincarnated in another world as a disgusting pig. Our protagonist finds himself in a pathetic state, covered in mud from head to toe and surrounded by pigs in a stable. Unable to move his limbs, he tries to look around, but his poor eyesight deprives him of clear vision. However, his nostrils don't disappoint him, and with just one whiff, he can easily make out more of his surroundings, from the smell of pig dumps to a blend of pig pen scents. Suddenly, all the pigs start running, and some step on him, but he soon forgets the pain when he notices a girl. The pigs get excited as the girl's presence means food time as she brings fresh feed for them. Our protagonist finds it strange that she hasn't noticed him slumped in the mud but hopes she'll help him. The girl steps closer to where he is lying. He tries to explain that he can't move his body and asks her to help him, but he surprises himself when he grunts after the sentence. He tells her a little about himself, which basically concludes that he is an otaku. The frequent belching grosses him out, but he can't help letting one out whenever he tries to speak. Just then, he hears the girl's voice, who finally realizes he's not a pig and assures him she'll get him out of the shed. The protagonist is happy that she gets it but is amazed that he can hear the girl's voice even though she doesn't open her mouth to speak. The protagonist is astonished because even though she didn't talk to him, she knew exactly what he was saying. And above that, he could hear her thoughts, too. The girl, who had run out to fetch something, returns with a wooden board to help him get out. As the girl pulls him out, the protagonist remembers he was a prototypical male science nerd, standing at 174 centimeters tall and weighing 53 kilograms. But in the manner the girl plopped him on the board, he realizes destiny has played a cruel joke on him, and he has turned into a pig. As the plump pig lies and contemplates how he ended up in such a pathetic situation, he tries to convince himself that it must be a dream. However, to him, the world appears dichromatic, which is one of the attributes of a pig. So he's definitely a pig. His mind soon wanders to the girl, and as he tries to focus on her, he hopes she's pretty. He soon lets his perversion cloud his mind, wishing to get a peek under her skirt. He doesn't stop there and hopes she is a blonde, school-going girl. The girl stares at him, shocked, and resumes dragging him. After some time, he opens his eyes and finds himself in a bedroom. He breathes a sigh of relief that the nightmare is over. He blames the raw pig liver he had, after which he suffered from intense stomach pains and collapsed on the train platform. That is the last thing he remembers, and he assumes someone must have taken him to the hospital. He looks around and realizes it is not a hospital, and soon, the girl from before steps inside. She looks hesitant and apologizes for not being able to turn him back to human. The pig doesn't understand what she's talking about and gets down from the bed. He walks towards a mirror and finds he still is a chubby pig. The pig realizes the girl can read his mind, making him edgy. To calm him, the girl introduces herself as Jess, a Yethma or the maid class, who takes care of the household. The pig reciprocates and, in a phony accent, tells her he's from Tokyo, Japan. Jess apologizes for her ignorance and admits she doesn't know anything about the outside world besides Mysteria. Seeing the pig look confused, she drags a chair near the window and asks him to hop on it. She opens the window to a lush green field and explains that the entire stretch of the land is known as Mysteria. They are currently in the home of House Kiltiran. She further explains that Yethmas are distinctive for wearing silver collars, which represents that they can communicate with their minds. The pig now understands how she could understand him. Jess offers the pig some fruits she's bought, thinking he might be hungry. The pig agrees he's hungry but for a touch and not for food. Jess complies and starts stroking his back, and he enjoys it as his dream from the Ice Sky fantasy stage finally seems to become a reality. With many questions in his mind, he looks at Jess lecherously and has an intense desire to take her there, making the pig more swine-like. Jess confirms she heard everything and says that while he was asleep, she brushed him and made her skirt shorter as per his wishes. She apologizes for being intrusive. However, the pig thinks otherwise and can't believe his luck that he crossed paths with such an innocent girl. He feels if he were to wish to see her naked, she wouldn't flinch, and just as he thought, Jess starts unbuttoning her shirt while she hesitantly explains there is not much to see. The pig stops her in time and asks her to listen carefully. He blatantly praises the size of her bosom, explaining many prefer that size. He further says she should concentrate on the things he wants to convey. Rest are monologues that he wants her to ignore. He shows his gratitude for everything Jess has done for him and even made his fantasies come true. But he feels if she keeps up with this, he'll lose the excitement. After all, she is not some fairy who exists to fulfill all his desires. Jess, however, stays adamant, so to dissuade her from stealing the charm, he outrightly points out that it makes him feel awkward. 
He thinks about his dream and imagines Jess as his younger sister. He fantasizes about the devoted, sweet one who would pour love into her cooking for him and, at the same time, a sister who treats him like a pig but still makes him his lunch. He mentally makes a note of the second one being preferable and conveys it to Jess. He clarifies that he doesn't want to be on the receiving end of one-sided love because that will indebt him, and he has nothing to offer in return. He hates that kind of thing and asks her to help him only when he asks for it, and he promises to do everything in his power as a pig to return the favor. He doesn't shy away from saying if he's treated like a pig and only helped when needed. It is titillating for him. He goes on about his plans to see her without clothes on a rainy day. As soon as Jess responds to it positively, the pig reminds her it was a monologue. His creepy fetishes have made one thing clear, Audacus enjoy being treated like pigs. Jess goes for a walk with a pig, the pig then begins to fantasize about her dress, complimenting her about how beautiful she is. She then asks the pig to walk closer to her as it is far away. He then tells her they were just compliments and has no ulterior motives, but she doesn't believe him because his description of her was very raw. She then introduces herself to the pig telling him that her name is Jess. The pig exclaims in joy that he finally has gotten to know her name and sees it as a reward for being on first name basis with her. He also tells her she can call him Mr. Pig but would love it if she paid more attention to what he said. They both walk to a farm filled with lots of chickens. Mr. Pig runs toward the chickens chasing them away but Jess cautions him not to do so. Mr. Pig explains he can't help it because that's what pigs do. Jess tells him if he doesn't stop chasing the chickens she will torment him and he falls to the ground in shock. Jess and Mr. Pig both walk into a room on the farm and she tells him to have a little patience with her because she needs to tend to the farm animals. She walks up to a wooden cabinet, opens it up, and places an orange crystal inside. Suddenly the room lights up and cleaning equipment appears, cleaning the pigs that were in their pens. Mr. Pig gasps in surprise as he hasn't seen such an act before. Mr. Pig asks Jess how it all works and she tells him that on the farm they use something called Risty to care for the animals. She goes on telling Mr. Pig that he wouldn't know about it since he was a foreigner to the land. She reaches into her pockets to bring out different colored stones and shows them to Mr. Pig as he stands in front of her in awe. Jess explains to him that the stones are created every day by a great mage and then distributed to everyone in the kingdom. She goes on to tell him that they have magical powers that can be used for different purposes. She explains that each color symbolizes a special gift, yellow being for light and movement, red for heat and flames. Mr. Pig is amazed by this discovery and asks Jess how many types of stone are created. Jess tells him there are mainly five stones created, yellow, red, green, blue and black. Mr. Pig is surprised by the fact that a black stone is created because he thinks black has a bad attribute. But she tells him that the black stone is for prayer, and if used, can cause a miracle that only mages can achieve but only a few of them use the black stone. Mr. Pig tries to find out why only a few would use a stone that can create a miracle, and Jess tells him that only a certain person called Yethmas can use the stone. She goes on telling him that at the Kiltiri house, the stones are used for medicinal purposes, but all depend on how the Yethmas pray. She also tells him that the black stone never works for normal people. Just then she realizes that the cleaning of the farm was almost done and asks Mr. Pig to play outside for a while. He falls to the ground saddened by the fact that she still treats him like a pig. Jess and Mr. Pig are now outside, under a tree and he begins to daydream again of her. She then cuts him short by telling him that she didn't feel she was beautiful, but tells her that the beautiful ones never accept beauty. So they both begin to banter on the case of beauty. Just then a mild wind blows and elevates Jess's skirt revealing her thighs. Mr. Pig was astonished to finally get a glimpse of her thighs and goes on to call her an angel. But she tells tell him to stop complimenting her and she feels embarrassed every time he does that and if continues she is going to spank him. To her greatest stories he turns he but asking her to spank him but she just turns away instead. She tells Mr. Pig that he's a nice person inside but Mr. Pig asks her if she was being surrounded by mean people. But she says no saying since she was a servant she didn't have the chance to make friends and she was glad to have met him. Mr. Pig tries to find out what she does with her time since she doesn't have any friends. Jess goes on telling Mr. Pig that she reads fairy tale stories during her free time and Mr. Pig is perplexed because they both have the same interests. Jess tells Mr. Pig that she dreams of traveling and meeting a prince. She is grateful to meet him cause now she has someone who can help her in times of need. Mr. Pig is touched to be a good friend but asks her if people often turn to animals in their kingdom. 
so he tells him the story of a war between mages and how they turn people to animals. Mr. Pig tries to find out if there are any mages alive that could turn him back to human. Jess tells him that in their village there's a mage who survived the war and for that he would have to go see the king. Mr. Pig appeals to Jess to go with him and she agrees telling him that if the king hears of his situation she's sure he'd help him. She goes on to tell him that both meeting and helping each other must be fate. She sits on the ground revealing her undergarments. Mr. Pig then tells her that she can't go around showing her undergarments even though he's just a pig. She gets up crying and apologizing for traveling her undress but he tells her that it was okay and next time he'd want to see something more interesting. Jess asks the pig to wait while she changes her clothes. Initially, the pig is alarmed that she is going to change before him, and his hormones start dancing. Jess chuckles at his eagerness and pulls out a corset. The two soon leave the mansion, and Jess apologizes for playing a trick on him. The pig says he was just expecting to see her in a different outfit, totally forgetting that she can read his mind and dirty thoughts. Jess points at the dwelling. She tells him it is the town of Kaltiri. They soon reach the town, and the pig is amazed to see the liveliness and compares it to a festival. Just then, a shop catches his attention, and he asks Jess about it. Jess tells him it is a risky shop and because they are very expensive, they have tight security. They reach the entrance of a dark alley, and the pig asks why they're there. Jess asks the pig to stay close by. She tells him that Yethmas don't just read people's minds but can communicate their inner thoughts, so she warns him against speaking out loud. As she's ready to step into the alley, the pig stops her, worried for her safety. But Jess assures him she's safe as the corset she's wearing has the house Kultirin crest. No one will dare to attack her. Surprisingly, the pig takes up the role of her guard, and together they step into the alley. A shady-looking man approaches them and offers to sell three bottles of black risty for 400 golds. Jess is broke and asks how much for only one bottle, which the man says will cost her 150 golds. While Jess checks her purse, the pig remembers black risty is used by Yethmas for prayer, and telepathically asks how many she would need for one session. Jess tells him she would need one. The pig further asks if there is any leftover magic power after a wish has been granted, and Jess confirms. The pig asks her to pretend to chase him before he runs in the opposite direction. Jess apologizes to the man, who starts getting anxious and runs after the pig. They stop only after they are out of the town. Once they catch their breath, the pig tells her not to buy from that man. He explains those risky are just leftovers. Jess realizes that the guy started acting weird once he saw the crest, yet she was unable to read his thoughts. The pig speculates that the guy is being careful not to give away his evil intentions while doing business with Yethmas, who can read his mind. He theorizes that the man realized she belonged to the house of Kultirin, and if he sold her anything, he would get exposed and caught. Jess tells the pig that she usually buys Risty from the shop they saw on their way, and one bottle costs her 600 golds. Since that man was kind enough to call her, she felt bad for suspecting him. The pig sighs at Jess's kindness, which supersedes naivety. Jess shows her gratitude to the pig for helping her not get scammed. The pig is happy to help and asks her to be careful, as anyone who offers a huge discount usually has his own profit in mind. Jess is truly grateful for his help, and she gently caresses his face. The pig softens a bit and asks why she wanted to buy Black Risty. Jess isn't ready to delve into that yet. The pig admits that he couldn't understand her when he first woke up in the pig pen. But once he woke up in the room, he could understand her. He remembers her telling him she had done everything she could and asks what she did back then. Jess apologizes but doesn't say more. The pig rephrases his question and asks if she used a Black Risty from House Kultirin without permission to heal him and now she's out to buy a replacement with her own money. Jess admits it is all true and says she had just been reprimanded for using a yellow Rista without permission and a black Rista above that will only make things worse for her. The pig suspects Jess must have used the yellow Rista on him because she couldn't have carried him up to the third floor on her own. Jess, now on the verge of tears, apologizes for dragging the pig into the mess. The pig realizes she might just be the epitome of kindness, and he owes her way more than he could ever repay as a pig. He appeases her by saying she didn't do anything wrong as she was only trying to help a human who turned into a pig. They head back to the town and stand in the opposite alley of the Rista shop. The pig asks Jess if she has ever bargained, and as expected of Jess, she denies it, saying it would be terrible for her to cause the shop to suffer any losses. The pig explains that some haggling is fine since the shops usually earn profits. She agrees to try and steps inside the shop, where Killens greets her by her name. The pig telecommunicates with her, guiding her in each step. 
Jess asks for Black Rista, but Killens believes Ayethma can't afford the cost. He asks for 600 golds. The pig advises her to tell the amount she has and request him to lower the price. Jess tells Killens she has 200 golds and pleads with him to lower the price as she needs it. Killens outrightly says no and suspects she is not buying it for House Kultirin. He further mocks her by asking why he should give a discount. The pig is astonished to see the discriminatory behavior even though Jess told him Killens is nice to her. He remembers Jess telling him earlier that she needs the Black Rista by the next day before she leaves for the royal capital or else she'll be called a thief. The pig is curious to know how the Yethmas, who need the Rista but don't have the money, afford it. Back in the present, Jess offers to sell the pig along with 200 golds at the pig's suggestion. Killens is reluctant, but Jess tells him that the pig does many tricks. Killens asks her to show what the pig can do. Jess wonders what to say and commands the pig to dance. The pig is dumbfounded for a few seconds, but he sees a pattern carpet. He imagines the patterns to be instructions for a game that points to the direction he needs to move his limbs. He breaks into a break dance and takes it a step further by doing a head spin. Killens asks Jess to stop her pig as he can't breathe from laughing so hard. The pig stops with a grand finale of a spin and lands on two legs. Killens is thrilled and asks Jess to keep her 200 golds. He will give her the black rista in exchange for the pig. Killens says he'll use the pig to make money in the festival that evening. Jess offers to help him for free and says since she raised the pig, she wants to see him perform. He agrees to arrange the schedule so she can see the show. Jess telepathically apologizes to the pig and asks if he'll be fine. The pig assures her that he is a dirty, skinny, four-eyed and she shouldn't underestimate him. Killens hands Jess a black rista, and she thanks him. As soon as she leaves, Killens puts a collar on the pig and ties him up so he doesn't run away. In the evening, Killens sets up his stall and keeps the pig tied nearby. The pig is thinking of ways to escape when he hears Jess and is surprised to see her in a maid's outfit. His brain immediately switches to his perverted self, and he starts drooling and imagining her calling him master. Jess squats down to give the pig two large apples she has bought for him and calls him master, giving the pig an adrenaline rush. Once he is done eating, he asks Jess if she'll be going back to House Kultirin, and she says she has to pack for the trip. The pig asks her to meet him under the big tree she took him in the morning. He'll figure out his escape plan and will meet her when the sun starts rising. He assures Jess not to worry, and he's going to make it out of there. Jess smiles and says she trusts him. The festivities are in full swing, and people look happy except for the pig. He notices Jess working like a one-woman army while Killen's men are goofing around. So, the pig decides it is time to hog the limelight and save Jess. Killen's announces a musical band with the pig as their star. The pig looks at the massive crowd, and stage fright hits him like a brick. But when he spots Jess in the crowd cheering for him, her cuteness charges him up. As soon as the music starts, the pig becomes a twerking tornado, making everybody laugh. The pig ends his performance with a leap into the crowd, ending in a face splint and a leg twist. Jess rushes over to see if he's injured, but the pig telepathically tells her he is fine. Killens, upon seeing a massive crowd, asks Jess to go home, as his boys can take over. The pig promises to meet her under the giant tree. After Jess leaves, Killens attends to some other business. The pig takes the opportunity to pretend he can't dance while being tied by a collar. One of the customers requested to take off his collar. Killens' boys start selling one bottle for each request, and the customers get increasingly drunk. Killens returns to find everybody passed out and the pig is nowhere to be found. The pig manages to get to the alley and overhears the Rista dealer they encountered earlier talking to a shady-looking man about eliminating Jess. The Rista dealer says he can't afford a Yethma hunter, which enraged the shady guy, and he slams the guy on the wall, giving him an ultimatum. The pig freezes in fear but somehow manages to get himself together as he's got to save Jess. However, he loses sight of the guy but then remembers he has got pig powers, an enhanced vision and a powerful nose. Upon seeing the knife he's carrying, the pig takes a shortcut from the woods to get to Jess before the guy can. He reaches the house and tries to telecommunicate with Jess, but he can't reach her. Suddenly, he realizes the bad guys won't make their move on Jess inside the house. Instead, they're waiting for her to leave. The pig knows where to look for Jess and rushes to their rendezvous point, where he finds Jess sleeping under the giant tree. She's already there to not keep the pig waiting at dawn. The pig is overwhelmed and also annoyed by why Akadis fall in love so easily. He decides he will not let anyone lay as much as a finger on Jess and will protect her by all means. He wakes Jess up and tells her the danger she is in. Even so, Jess is more concerned by the fact if she's gone. How will the pig revert to his human form? 
Together, they start thinking of a way to make it alive, and the pig proposes that Jess should tell House Kultirin about the dealer and get them arrested. But Jess isn't sure they would go so far for Jess as she is a Yefma. She finally reveals she will not be going back to the mansion. After some thinking, the pig asks if there is a facility on the farm where they can lock someone up. Jess remembers there is a warehouse for masonry that can be locked from outside. He devises a plan and leads the dealer to a campfire while Jess retrieves the key to the warehouse. The pig intends to use the light from the campfire to blind the dealer with a nifty trick of light adaptation. Meanwhile, Jess opens the warehouse and the pig leads the dealer into it. But once inside, he sees an escape route that might ruin everything. So, the pig goes into offensive mode and hobbles on the dealer's good leg. The dealer fights back, hitting the pig with his sack but the pig bites his leg and crawls outside the warehouse. Jess quickly locks the door, trapping the dealer inside. However, she is shocked when she sees the pig has been stabbed in his back. As he lies in the pool of blood, he is grateful for the time he spent with Jess. Jess balls, regretting the pig will never get to see her naked. As the pig loses energy, he realizes dying by the side of a beautiful girl is much better than food poisoning. The next morning, surprisingly, the pig wakes up lying on a board while Jess sleeps nearby. Jess wakes up after bonking her head on the board from the pig's movements. She tells him that she used the dealer's black rista from the sack that the pig had accidentally pulled along while dragging himself out to revive him. He earns a hug from a relieved Jess. They are in a forest in northeastern Kaltiri, and if they keep walking in that direction, they will eventually reach the royal capital. They soon start on their journey, and the pig insists Jess ride on his back since it was his childhood dream to have a sweet, bare-legged girl straddle him. Since it is Jess's first time, she can't help the tickle she feels in uncharted places. The pig starts to lose it and asks her to sit by putting her weight on her hands. Jess obliges, but still, the feeling remains, which stresses the pig because he doesn't want his spine to show her what her first time will be like. He asks her to shift positions, and she finds a comfortable spot. Soon, they encounter a weird animal with the body of an ostrich and the face of a bat. Jess tells him that the animal is called Hecropon, a common animal in Mysteria. Jess explains this bizarre creature's significance in Mysteria's myths, sparking a conversation about hobbies. The pig says he likes reading, too, even though his actual hobby is watching slice-of-life anime and oinking at beautiful girls. He says he likes mystery stories and decides to tell Jess a story since she is unfamiliar with the genre. Jess admires his keen eye for details, and the pig admits he noticed her secretive behavior but says she doesn't have to reveal anything if she doesn't want to. However, he is curious about the reason why she bought a black wrist just before she met him and the reason why she tried to pass off the trip as an errand when she wasn't going back to house Kultiran. Jess seems uncomfortable, and when she finally speaks, she asks if the pig will still accompany her to the royal capital after hearing what she has to say. The pig confidently says yes, as he doesn't have a choice, or else he'll have to spend his entire life living as a pig. Jess takes her time, and after a few minutes of silence, she reveals she is going to the royal capital to offer herself, or else she will pass away en route. She explains that in Mysteria, the Yethmas who turned 16 leave the households they are serving and must travel to the royal capital on their own. Along the journey, most lose their lives because of the Silver Collar, which possesses unbelievable magic, making it a hot commodity among Yethma hunters. But because that magic power protects the Collar, it cannot be removed until someone beheads her. Jess thinks the pig will want to leave her now that the truth is out, but to her surprise, the pig refuses to part ways and promises to use every bit of his knowledge to protect her from danger. He asserts he will accompany her to the royal capital and turn himself back into a human. After a few hours of walking, Jess falls asleep on the pig while the pig starts strategizing and mulling over the looming dangers. They soon reach a village, and the pig wakes Jess up. She wakes up embarrassed for falling asleep, but the pig asks her not to worry. Their first goal is to hide her identity as a Yethma, which means they need to hide the collar. So they go to the market to buy a scarf. When Jess asks the pig to pick one for her, he feels it is finally time for his four-eyed, super virgin self who has never had a girlfriend, to showcase his talent. He picks a green scarf, and, overjoyed by the selection, Jess goes in to buy it. As the pig is waiting outside, a blonde man with a wolf dog walks out of the shop. He walks away after he finds the pig staring at him. Soon after, Jess comes out wearing the scarf and looking happy. They make their way to a diner, and the owner is kind enough to present her with a steam towel and a simple meal. She sends Ceres, a Yethma, to fetch it for Jess, and even though Jess is wearing a scarf, the woman sees right through it but remains unfazed and even offers a place to stay for the night. 
She asks Jess if she's going to the royal capital. The pig winces at Jess, casually confirming it. But Jess says it is fine and asks about the collar hung on the wall. The woman replies that it belonged to Ice, Ceres's predecessor who used to work there. She tells Jess they used to shelter Yethmas, who had turned 16, in a convent in Baptses. Jess remembers hearing about that convent and is curious to know if Eyes passed away in the fire that took place five years ago. But the woman tells her the Yethma hunters took Eyes. The reason for the fire still remains unknown. However, there was one hunter who took it back from the Yethma hunters and is the pride of their village. Meanwhile, the pig almost lets his fantasies slip, making Ceres suspicious. Jess soon sets off with the pig and Ceres to offer flowers at the place of the tragedy. While she is collecting flowers, Ceres asks Jess if the pig is her friend. Jess affirms and tells Ceres he is actually a 19-year-old boy. Once they reach the royal capital, she is hoping to take a maid's help in turning the pig back to his human form. As they make their way to the ruins of the convent, Jess clutches her scarf, a symbol of support she found. It is a reminder that she is not alone, and she has a swine in shining armor on her side. Pig, Jess, and Ceres find themselves in the ruins of a convent when they suddenly encounter a boy armed with two knives and a growling wolf. The boy throws fire at them, and they're left wondering why he's attacking them. However, it's revealed that the boy is chasing after a creature, a hecropon. They stand there, watching him kill the creature, and Pig realizes he's in trouble. However, Ceres walked up to the boy and greeted him. She introduced him as Nod and reassured Jess that he was not a Yethma hunter but a very kind person. Despite Ceres' words, Pig remained skeptical and hesitant to believe her. Nod questions Ceres about why she brought Pig and Jess for sightseeing when they were supposed to go to the royal capital. Jess responds that it was her idea to come to the convent to pay her respects. Nod also notices that Jess is wearing a green scarf around her neck, so he hands her a nude scarf and tells her to wear it instead. She hesitates, saying someone might spot her if they are close enough. Nod insists that she wear it because not doing so could put Ceres in grave danger. Pig is upset when Jess asks Nod to help her put on the green scarf despite his insistence that she not let anyone else touch it. He felt jealous of Knot's closeness to Jess and thought Knot's kindness was just a ploy to get closer to her. Pig decided to speak to Jess, warning her that he would reveal his true identity to Knot if he saw any harm come to her. He also advised Ceres to treat him like any other pig, as he still did not trust Knot and didn't want to arouse suspicion. Jess and Knot exchange pleasantries before Jess enters the convent. She takes a flower and drops it at the feet of a broken statue. When she exits the building, Jess asks Nod about a nearby spring she has heard of. Nod is puzzled by her question and asks if she wants to go swimming, which provokes Pig. However, Jess tells Nod that she intends to bathe Pig. Nod then tells her that the spring is nearby and takes her there. After arriving, Jess gives Pig a bath. Pig expresses his gratitude, but Jess explains it was necessary as he would have gotten fleas if she hadn't and they spend some time discussing their journey together. At the restaurant where Ceres works, Jess tries to start a conversation with Nod about the bill, but he assures her that he will pay for their meals, and she thanks him. As they talk, a woman approaches them, praising Nod and offering him free meals. She also inquires about Jess's journey and wishes her safe travels. Ceres then comes to their table with two cups of beer and food for Pig and Nod's wolf. He asks about Pig, and she tells him that he is her friend and that she will start her life with him. Nod is shocked but continues to question her further. Nod and Jess walk along a path to a house in the dark. Pig is with them and questions Jess about trusting Nod, but she assures him that Nod won't harm her. When they reach the house, Pig stays outside with Nod's wolf while Nod and Jess go inside. Inside, Nod calls out to Jess and closes the door. Pig peeks through the door, imagining what could happen between the two, but calms himself down. In the middle of the night, Nott gets out of bed and leaves the house. Pig rushes inside the house towards Jess, only to find her sound asleep. He worries that Nott may have tried to do something inappropriate. But upon inspection, he finds no evidence. Just then, as he stands beside Jess, Ceres unexpectedly enters the house, catching Pig off guard. Pig and Ceres leave the house to have a discussion. During their conversation, Ceres suggests that Pig reveal his identity to Nott as soon as possible. Pig asks why she thinks it's necessary, but Ceres cries and explains that Nott loves Jess. Pig feels sorry for Ceres, realizing she loves Nott, but he also loves Jess. Ceres begs Pig not to give up on love and reveals that Nott plans to leave with them in the morning to the royal capital to become Jess's chabire. After being bombarded with information, Pig is confused and asks Ceres to explain. She tells him that a chabiron is a strong and brave companion required by every Yethma to reach the royal capital. 
She explains that the Chabiron disappears with the Yethma forever. Ceres encourages Pig to fight for his love, Jess, and not let his current situation hold him back. However, Pig feels saddened by her statement, explaining that love is a complicated concept even for most grown-ups. He also feels sorry for Ceres and tells her they should be together, but Ceres questions him, asking if his love for Jess should not be fulfilled. Pig replies no. Ceres questions Pig's feelings for Jess. Pig explains he fell for Jess due to her kindness. He believes it would be selfish to want Jess for himself as he is only a pig. He tells Ceres that Jess is kind to everyone but has opened up to not in a way he cannot question. He acknowledges that her kindness is not meant for only him. Despite Pig's efforts to convince Ceres, she still doubts his true identity. She proposes that he should become Jess's Chabiron and tell not the truth, but he cannot intervene in Jess's journey because of his feelings. He promises to reveal himself in the morning. Ceres offers to interpret for him when he can disclose his identity to Nott. He asks if this is a part of Yethma's skill, and she confirms it. Ceres suddenly becomes sad, thinking of Nott and feeling inferior to Jess. Pig tells her not to underestimate herself. He compliments her, saying she is lovely and that if he were human, he would never let her go. Ceres questions Pig about his preferences for girls, but he shies away from the question, which makes her giggle. However, she quickly talks about Jess, saying that Jess reminds her of a certain girl. Ceres shares with Pig the story of Nott, who loved a girl named Eyes who worked at the inn. However, Eyes chose to stay at the convent in Bapsays instead of going to the royal capital. A fire incident destroyed the convent, and Eyes was captured and killed by Yethma hunters. In response, Nott went after them and retrieved Eyes's collar, which is now hanging at the restaurant. Pig inquired if Ceres had ever seen Eyes, but she replied that she had only seen a photograph. She told Pig that Nott had a picture of Eyes engraved into a glass pendant. He also used a part of Eyes's bone as part of the hilts of his twin swords. As long as Nott's grudge lasted, his twin sword would be enveloped in flames, and he would continue killing Yethma hunters. That is why there was no room for her in Nott's heart. Later, Jess wakes up in the morning and sees Pig beside her bed. She apologizes for leaving him alone. At the restaurant, Ceres prepared some food and handed it over to Jess. Jess proceeded to eat while sitting at the table behind Nott. Jess greeted Nott who joined her table. He called out to Ceres, who said that there was something important she needed to tell him. Ceres then revealed to Nott that Pig was a human. Nott couldn't believe her, so Ceres asked Pig to speak. However, Nott was too shocked to believe that the Pig could talk. After testing out, Nott wanted to know how long Pig had been human. Pig explained to Nott that he had been watching him since they met the previous. Nott is in disbelief, and Ceres adds to his shock by confronting him about Jess already having a partner. However, Pig interrupted her by inviting Nott to go with them to the royal capital, leaving everyone surprised. Nott asks what Pig means by going with them to the royal capital. Pig replies that his skills and hatred for Yethma hunters are important to protect Jess during the trip. Ceres gets worried, as that wasn't what Pig promised to her. However, Jess refuses it because she thinks she will be fine with Pig by her side. Pig asks if she's certain about it, mentioning they got lucky in Kultiri. He reminds her that the guy's ability is as bad as a log. Jess reveals she's just trying to protect Ceres' feelings. But Pig advised Ceres to tell Nod how she feels about him. Nod asks what's going on, and Ceres replies she doesn't want him to go because she loves him. She then continues, mentioning how she knows he doesn't have feelings for her. But the guy blushes. She reveals that she's afraid of never seeing him again. But Pig has a plan. Nott will be their punching bag until they reach the capital, and he will then be sent back. Ceres asks Pig to promise he will do it. Pig says yes, explaining the right time for Nott to become a Chabiron is when Ceres turns 16. Pig then asks for Jess' opinion, and she agrees to follow Pig's plan. Now, they just need Nott's answer. Pig decides to guilt trip the guy, asking if Nott will allow Jess to be killed and use her bone to make another sword. Nott wants to turn Pig into bacon, but Pig simply tells Nott to finish what he decides to do. After Pig pleads with him to help them, Nott makes his decision and asks Pig to not regret it. They quickly prepare their stuff and Ceres says goodbye to Nott. Before leaving, Jess promises that Nott will return to Ceres and thanks her for the help. However, they find a problem as soon as their trip starts. Nott's wolf is having fun with Jess' skirt. Pig quickly headbutts him away, but the wolf starts teasing Pig by laying on top of him. Nott tells his wolf to stop disturbing and Jess starts laughing it off. They continue walking until Pig decides to ask the most stupid question. How long will it take to reach the capital? Nott thinks this raw piece of bacon is dumb, because he decided to come without knowing it. Nott then replies that it will take about five days to reach the capital. But that's only if nothing happens. Jess is a bit concerned. 
but Nod explains that by afternoon they will be reaching Valley of Oil, and then head to Munirons, where they will be resting for the night. Jess seems extremely concerned about something. Nod continues to explain they will later camp on the Impaling Stones, and a few miles later they will be able to see the capital. However, the most challenging part of their trip is the Forest of Needles, which surrounds the whole royal capital. He explains that is the hardest part because Yethma hunters will be around to ambush them. They make a quick stop by a river and Pig watches Jess trying to catch something. He asks her what she is doing. She replies she saw the Eternity butterfly and tried to catch it. Pig is confused, but Jess explains that it's a small butterfly that glows green. She then mentions a legend about it. If someone catches it, they will have eternal happiness. However, Nod gets mad and tells her to not be fooled by stupid legends. He reveals that he knows someone who did it, but that person is still unhappy. Pig asks the real question. How is he sure about it? Of course, Nod ignores the question. He's probably that person. They continue their trip, and Jess tells Pig how Valley of Oil got its name. A long time ago during the Dark Age, there was a huge war and several people got wiped out. In short, the land was covered in blood and the river looked like a stream of oil. So that's why they named it that way. Pig wonders if she's referring to the time when mages were at war. Jess confirms it, explaining at that time many mages conquered other tribes. But they always wanted more power, turning war into a never-ending cycle. In the end, almost every mage died, and only one bloodline survived. Pig wonders about the other mages who won or went into hiding. But Jess replies they were probably given the afterlife penalty by the grandfather of the king. She then mentions they don't have much information because most of the scriptures about that time have been burnt. Not then gives his conclusion that it was a pure massacre. He mentions that people who have power will always put others in danger. So, the only way to protect themselves is to eliminate their enemies. Pig is confused because they would end up destroying their tribes if they kept fighting with each other. By the end of the day, they finally reach the city of Munires. Jess is impressed as it's way bigger than Kultiri. Nod explains this city stations the army of the royal family, so it's a safe place. Pig looks around, noticing the transportation system, and asks Nod if renting a caravan isn't safer and faster. Nod aggressively calls the pig dumb and replies that Yethmas are forbidden by law from using any vehicle. If they do it, they will get the afterlife penalty, along with the person who let her get on. Pig is confused and asks for the reason for that law. Turns out, there's no reason. The king just ordered it for fun and people must obey. Pig now feels like he must be educated and asks not to teach them all the laws that exist. Of course, Not decides to ignore him and walks away. Jess tells Pig there are only two laws related to Yethmas. The first is the one is the one previously mentioned. Yethmas cannot ride or be carried by a vehicle. Nobody talked about riding a pig though. And the second is that they cannot get intimate with anyone. Pig goes for his biggest concern, if that's also punishable. Jess replies that it is. Pig then realizes this is all related to female Yefmas, but what about male Yefmas? Not gets annoyed and replies there is no such thing as a male Yefma. Pig is confused, and Jess confirms that Yefmas are all girls. Not simply gives up and decides that they must rent a place to stay before it's too late. But Pig asks if what he did last night didn't infringe the Yefma rule. But Not tells him to shut up because he's a hunter. He claims that hunters are free people who respect Yefma's rights and treat them with equality. This guy seems pretty mad for some reason, making Pig confused. Not claims he only cried last night because he was drunk, but Pig never knew about it. Pig clarifies this is a misunderstanding and apologizes. Inside the inn, Jess and Pig talk about how Not has never wanted to forget the Yethma from his past. And that's why Pig recruited him because he will do anything to deal with Yethma hunters. Jess reads Pig's mind and thanks him because he promises to use any means to take her to the capital. He tells her to stop reading his mind, otherwise, he will peek at her. She apologizes and mentions that he can peek at her as much as he wants. Even a pig is luckier than you in real life. Meanwhile, Nod is outside, reminding the moments he spent with his Yefma. She looked just like Jess, and one day, she saw Nod heavily injured after dealing with a bear. She tried to take care of him, but he refused. In the end, he passed out and she cared for him. He woke up a few hours later, but I simply told him to rest more and be more careful. This brat tells her to not get involved because he will decide his future. Eyes pulls the reverse card, mentioning that he always said that he wanted to marry her. Not, however, rejected it, mentioning she would leave the village soon. Eyes was a bit hurt, but then smiled asking if that's the reason why he's been avoiding her. She laughs at it and asks if he doesn't want her to go. He asks if they can do something about it, and she replies there's a way for him to become an adult and go with her. He blushes and made that his goal in life, but he failed. He returns to the inn, where he drinks his sorrows again. 
Pig then looks at the wall and asks about the collar hanging on. She tells him it's a silver crest. They use it as proof that they are a patron for Yefma. Pig thinks people could steal it and copy it. Jess explains that if the collar is separated from Yefma's body, it will release magic and self-destruct. The only way to avoid it is if the collar is managed by someone who the Yefma loved. Not continues, mentioning that if someone with ill intent towards Yefma gets closer to it, then the collar will turn black and disappear. He explains that as long as the collar glows, this inn will be safe for them. Pig wonders if it might be a fake collar, but not dismisses it because Yefmas can tell if it's real or fake by looking at it. Jess confirms it, explaining that it glows differently to her, and she can also hear a faint voice from it. Pig continues his interrogation, asking when Yefmas got their collars, and how are they born because they're all women. Nod gets annoyed that Pig became a chab iron, but he knows nothing about this. He then explains that Yethmas are trained as servants in the royal capital until they turn eight years old. They are then sold to houses with rights and money, and they mysteriously get their collars while being transported. To be fair, nobody knows their parents, how they get their collar, or how they are trained. That's because Yethmas cannot remember what happened until they got sold. Pig thinks this sounds quite crazy, but Jess explains it's alright because her life wasn't so bad. She got paid for working as a servant and even got free time. Not finishes his drink and orders them to hurry up and go to sleep. Minutes later, Jess also reaches the room, where Nod is sleeping like a rock, and looks at Pig. He tells her to sleep, but she wants to talk to him. However, she doesn't have anything to say to him. In fact, she asks if he wants to tell her something. Nothing comes to Pig's mind, so she decides to apologize to him. Pig is confused, but she explains that she drank last night and felt great and for some reason, she invited Knot to her room. Pig tells her to not worry about it because he knows that Jess was able to read Knot's heart and felt safe. He gives her some advice about drinking less next time, but Jess still feels bad about it. She explains that she promised to walk her destiny with Pig, but she invited another guy into her room. Pig forces himself to tell that they aren't a couple, and he doesn't need to know who she is with or what they do. He claims that he isn't bothered by what she possibly did with Knot last night, despite being a clear lie. She apologizes a few more times, and he realizes that he is a bit too harsh. He apologizes for it, mentioning he's happy that she considers his feelings. Yet, he still claims they have a free relationship. Jess is confused, but Pig decides to friendzone himself saying they're like siblings. Jess accepts the self-friendzone, calling it a great relationship. He then quickly tells her to go to sleep, but she doesn't seem happy about it. In the end, she tells Pig, good night big brother. They quickly get some Z's, but Pig gets awakened by the wolf. He gets up and sees Jess is still up. She tells him that she hears a voice from someone called Blaze calling out for her. She thinks only Yuthmas can hear it and shares her power with Pig. The two suddenly hear Blaze, asking to be saved from a scary darkness. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.